hello everyone. Hey review family, keep it I keep it tight. My name is Jay Morse, the review guy reviewing music for the love of music. We're continuing list week 2019, you know what it is at this point. And we're on to the big list, the massive list, the list that take the longest that hopefully you're going to have the best editing. I hope future Alex is able to actually do that. Just between you and me, future me, get off your lazy ass. Songs, songs, songs. I have heard a lot of music this year, a lot of albums, a lot of songs, and I'm sad that it has to be this short of a list because I could easily make a top 100, a top 200, probably indefinitely. However, without further ado, I will be presenting you with my top 60 songs of the year. They're going to be listed in alphabetical order in the description box below in no particular order because I want you guys to watch the list and all that. I think it goes without saying whether it's 60, whether it's one, I highly suggest all of these songs. They come from a wide range of genres and maybe you'll find some new albums, artists, or songs to listen to that you will enjoy. I will be going pretty quickly through the first 30 or so and then I'll probably describe a little bit more about each track as we go forward. And I prepared for this list. All year I've had this massive document of songs and whittling it down hurt my soul, dude. So I'll go through a couple from my list just to move fairly quickly. You got Born of Osiris's Disconnectomy, probably, in my opinion, the best track off of the simulation. Really disappointed that they didn't come out with the second part. Hi is a Kai Too Early, really love this indie dream pop band, love this track off of it. White Chapel, Hickory Creek, I think that Philip Bozeman really flexes his singing on this track. In that Whitechapel album, The Valley is very dynamic when it comes to how it portrays sound and how it portrays a little bit more melodicism than anything the Deathcore band has previously done. I really enjoyed the Scarlord track, Living Legend. Even though I wasn't a fan of much of Scarlord's output this year, this refrain that go fuck yourself till you bleed, move, just I can't get that out of my head the way he growls it. At number 56, I have the Numenorian track, Regret, from their album Adore. I really enjoyed this track, think it's a great post-black metal track. Track. It was the first track I heard from Numenorian. It came on my Discover Weekly and I checked it out, really loved it. Have that tie because it was what catapulted me into my enjoyment of the band. Number 55 is the Chon song, Cloudy, Jazzy, Funky, the instrumental band Chon. Everyone loves Chon. If you don't, please love Chon. Number 54 is the Insane Clown Posse track, Game Over. Really a tongue-in-cheek track that features Insane Clown Posse doing what they do best, which is poking fun at stereotypes, poking fun at taboo subjects. I really love the lyrics on this track, and that definitely is the standout point. Everything down from how they have the pitched-up mom voice screaming at the kid. Number 53 is going to be Slipknot, Solway Firth, the ending track off of We Are Not Your Kind. Really an epic track from start to finish and I think Corey Taylor's vocals sound amazing on this track. The drum work obviously fantastic and even though there are many parts of We Are Not Your Kind that I'm not a huge fan of and even though it's not one of my favorite albums of the year, this record is not Slipknot's best record in my opinion but it's definitely up there. It definitely stands out as one of the best tracks of the year. At number 52 is the Amana Marsh song Shield Wall. Vikings raise the Shield Wall. This is off their album Berserker that they dropped this year. Really enjoyed that album really enjoyed this track even though it is fairly run-of-the-mill by Amon Amar standards I still think it has a catchy melodic flow to the whole thing that melodic death metal feel that edge that I enjoy quite a bit number 51 is injury reserves track jailbreak the Tesla it was really difficult for me to pick which injury reserve track I was going to include on this list considering I really enjoy GTFU I really enjoy the track gravy and biscuits they're just a jawbreaker that's another really good track I liked a lot of this album but I ended up going with Jailbreak the Tesla, love the effect on the vocals, love the rapping on the vocals, love the little tongue-in-cheek references to Elon Musk on the track. Their self-titled album is a really good album. Number 50 is Blackpink's track Kill This Love. Even though I was not a fan whatsoever of the EP, this is a really good K-pop single of the year. Definitely one of the most standout singles of the year. The typical blending of K-pop and trap, you know the drill. Number 49 is the Denzel Curry track, Ricky. Love the chorus on this track, one of the catchiest rap choruses of the year. I wish Zoo was longer, although Denzel Curry has a habit of dropping little projects before big projects. Really looking forward to seeing what he's going to do. He comes through with those classic Denzel Curry flows. He sounds great. Number 48 is the 
Primitive Man track, Oily Tears, off their split with the band Hell. Really love how dense this sounds and how thick the overall composition is. I think Primitive Man really is living up to the hype of Caustic, which in my opinion is their best album. Number 47 is the Shin track Center of Tokyo off his album Azalea, which is one of my favorite Japanese albums of the year. It is a fairly typical J-Rock sound, but I just love the bass line on this track. It's impossible to escape this bass line seriously. Number 46 is the Knock Loose track Bellevue, the opening to their album A Different Shade of Blue, and it really just kickstarted my love for the band considering I had never really adapted to their sound and never really found an affinity for their sound. At number 45, I gotta give it to Tomb Mold with Beg for Life, such a grimy death metal track. It really got me so interested in Tomb Mold's sound and really made me have an appreciation for their previous material as well. Very gritty 20 buck spin album if you haven't checked it out. Number 44 is going to be Tyler, the Creator's track, Earthquake, off his album Igor, the shocking torty force of R&B and vintage soul. It sounds great. <laughs> Number 43 is the Little Sims track Venom off of her amazing album Grey Area. Love the hell out of this track. Love the messaging of female empowerment and how she just really doesn't give a shit what people think about her. Love that theme. Number 42 is the clipping track Blood of the Fang. David has some of the best flow in the game right now. And of course, you know, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up, drink it up. Number 41 is Infinite Annihilate Plague Bearer. In my opinion, the catchiest, best track off of their album, The Battle of Yalda Bow Off. I've never known how to pronounce that but definitely one of the more exciting deathcore albums of the year gave it a fairly positive review some people didn't like that because they're not a fan of the band they're kind of like a meme they're not taken too seriously because they sound so over the top and sound so static but that is part of the fun that is the intention of the band number 40 is Kim Petrus's track I see off of her album clarity I love that chorus so much it was one of my favorite choruses when it came out that I had heard the whole year get an ice cold heart she sounds great. She sounds lavish. The effect thrown on her voice sounds great. Number 39 is the Billie Eilish track, I Love You, off of her album, When We All Fall Asleep, Where Do We Go? Might be a little surprising, but the subtle guitar chords and her intimate, hushed singing really outdoes anything that some of the bigger singles on the album, like Bury a Friend, or You Should See Me in a Crown, or Bad Guy, or even Zanny Do. I think this just sounds so pretty, and the messaging of the track is very heartfelt. Number 38 is FKA Twigs with Holy Terrain. Even though I wasn't a fan whatsoever of the future feature. She sounds so amazing on this track, this art pop feel. And even though Magdalene, in my opinion, isn't as good as her previous material, it's still a really good album. I like the direction that she went in on this record. And kind of like the Billie Eilish I Love You track, she sounds so hushed on this track. She sounds so vulnerable on this track in a way that sometimes you don't necessarily hear her on her tracks, which is a very nice change of pace. At 37, I got the Chelsea Wolf track, The Mother Road. Very nice folk rock instrumental to this whole thing. Got a little bit of hate for enjoying this album as much as I did, but as a really, really avid lover of the folk genre, seeing Chelsea return back to her roots after kind of going in different directions of the dark wave and that whole vibe that she did on her past few albums, I love the return to her roots. I love the return to her folk roots because she does it so well. I just love the dreary atmosphere, the drab atmosphere across this whole album, and this track really got me into this album and got me into the mood that she was trying to apply. Number 36 is As I Lay Dying's track, Shaped by Fire, the self-titled track off of their album. This is just a kick-ass classic metalcore album and a kick-ass metalcore track, what do I say? Tim sounds better than ever, he sounds crisp, the growls are great, the screams are great, the singing is great, it's just a great track. Number 35 is the Shura track, Tommy. Such an endearing track, and I want to believe it's real. I love her album that she dropped forever. I think it is a little underrated. But Tommy, it's such a good track. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. The pianos, it's a minimalist type of instrumental, but her vocals just come off as so sweet on this track. Smooth as silk. Number 34 is the Lingua Ignota track, Do You Doubt Me, Traitor? Her wails on this track, her howls into oblivion, it's one of the best 
how do you even describe this album? I didn't even get a chance to review Caligula because it just blew my mind so much. It's so freakish. Her pain, her anguish, especially if you read into the content, the reason why this album is this way, the meaning of the lyricism. It's a dark record. It's a dark neoclassical vibe. And even though it was dropped on Profound Low Records, it could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the heaviest metal records that drop on that label. Number 33 is the Claro track, Bags. She comes through with one of her best tunes on the whole album of Immunity. It was the first track on Immunity that I really fell in love with entirely. And then as I kept giving the album more chances, it became one of my favorite indie records of the year. Once again, Claro just has a great vocal style. And I know people can say it's understated, but I think that is part of her appeal and why I personally enjoy her so much. Number 32, Full of Hell with Armory of Obsidian Glass. Surprise this is here. I pro you probably are. You may maybe you aren't. It's definitely the most ambitious track off of their album Weeping Choir. It's so long compared to Full of Hell's usual forays into grindcore and power violence. It's sludgy, it's distorted, it is heavy, it has so much resonance to it. It really is great. And number 31, I got the tool track Tempest. Definitely the best track off of Fear Inoculum, in my opinion. It's so long, it's so epic, it has so much tension building to it. It has so much atmosphere to it. The band does a great job. And Maynard is obviously amazing. What can you really say besides that? At number 30, I got the Gucci High Waters track, Bad For Me. One of the most atmospheric tracks I've heard the entire year. I love his vocals. I love his melodies. I love his harmonies. It's so quick, but it has so much of a punch to it. The instrumental is somewhat minimalist, but once again, the atmosphere it builds is through the roof. At 29, I got the Ludicious track, Alien. It was a toss-up between this track and equals off his album. I love Alien mostly for the chorus. Of course the vocals on the rapping, the verses are great, the mixing is great, the whole album has a great production to it, but the chorus on this track in particular I'm not doing his harmonies justice because he's ludicious. What, how can I do his harmonies justice? It's just a great track. Check it out. Next up, King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard with Planet B. How do you not love this as a thrash metal album or just a track in general? Open your eyes and shoot the dingo. All oh, this shit goes out the window. Multi-faction rusting tractors dying heroes. It has all the punch and grit of classic thrash metal, but with King Gizzard and the Lizard Wizard's trademark weirdness. Number 27 is the BTS track, Make It Right. Not the Lao version. The Lao version is great. I just love the tune on this track. You might have thought I would have picked Boy With Love or Jamey Vu or Dionysus. Nah, it has to be Make It Right. <laughs> And by the power of the internet and time and editing, I have returned for blood. We're going to continue this long. Gotta get myself pumped up. Come on, come on, get, get pumped up. <laughs> God, the things I do for this channel. You good? You still good? You still got your bag of popcorn? If not, go replenish that Orville Redenbacher. Get your Coke beside you because we're moving on with number 26, Car Bomb, Fade Out. Best mathcore album of the year, bar none. It is very hard to argue that any album in a quite a few years has really matched up with Car Bomb. Really don't understand people saying they don't like this record. It is just great. Number 25, Brockhampton with Boy Bye. Easily my favorite track on the record, although this was a little contested with Dearly Departed considering the connotations it meant towards past member Amir Van. This is their sad boy album and boy bi is just great. How do you not like this little... The beat is so catchy. The beat is so catchy and Dom comes through with one of my favorite verses on the whole album. Next up at 24 is North Lane with 4D. A lot of these have to do with the refrains or something that sticks out in my mind and I have to say the chorus on this track when it goes bursts in. Obviously this album bleeds Linkin Park especially on some of these cleaner sections but still it's such a great track. Alien maybe has dulled a little bit in my enjoyment of the album but it's still such a kick-ass album when you consider tracks like 4D. Number 23 Super M with Jopping my K-pop single of the year. I will go ahead and say that. Yeah, you a quarter pounder. I'm a Big Mac. 
such a catchy flow all the members do absolutely fantastic but at this point Jopping is considered one of the best k-pop songs of the year it's a super group what did you expect this isn't some new band these are a bunch of experienced veterans that are just grouping together and kicking ass collectively and number 22 the Hannah Diamond track Concrete Angel I really love this track in particular off of her album this is my pop album of the year but I love this track for the sense. I love it for her auto-tune vocal performance as well as the really, really distorted breakdown like near the mid-section that's so good. Number 21, Brand of Sacrifice, Divinity. I have such a soft spot for God Hand, the album. It's such a great slamming deathcore album. It's so, it's so over the top. Not necessarily in an Infinite Annihilator way, but just the overall production is so pristine, but I can't get enough of it. And it's a track I go back to an unhealthy amount of times. At number 20, I have the Rich Brian track, Yellow. I once jokingly told someone it was the Bohemian Rhapsody of this year as kind of a joke, but now that I think about it, in terms of phases, in terms of the epicness, the magnitude of the track, I can kind of see that. I did the seven most surprising albums of 2019 video and the Sailor from Rich Brian was on there and a lot of that came from the surprise I had from Yellow. Never thought he'd pen a track like that. At number 19 I have I Prevail with Hurricane. Such a heartfelt track with those synths. One of the best tracks off of their album Trauma. I really do love the latter half as well but most of the enjoyment for this track comes through with the endearing song qualities and the topic that they tackle for the first two minutes or so but of course the breakdown near the latter half is still kick-ass it's brutish it's machismo makes me want to flip my cat backwards even though it's already backwards and drink a monster number 18 legion of the damned with the widow's breed yeah widow's breed <laughs> best thrash metal album of the year man i've talked until i'm blue in the face about legion of the damned very good thrash metal album i actually turned some of you guys on to them and i hope i can continue doing that because if i can help expose artists that i think are really good i want to number 17 periphery with reptile hello as someone that has never found an affinity for periphery this 1644 second track is a prime example of why i did periphery for hail stand is their best album that they have ever released and reptile is one of my favorite tracks they've ever released if not my favorite the progressions this song goes through embodies why i love progressive metalcore and gen as much as i do if anyone asks i'll just show them this track number 16 hell young with gal Gardor. Gal Gardor, Gal Gal Gadot, <laughs> Gal Gadot from Wonder Woman. Nah, for real, people are gonna think I'm high for this. I need to calm down. I'm not drunk, I'm not high, I promise. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I remember Hell Young. I've always heard about them, never really tried them. And when I first heard this track, this was the first time I'd ever taken a step back and said, holy shit, what is this band? I don't think I can be any more positive here than I was in my review of the album. So go check that out 100%. Number 15, Wit Lowry featuring Dion Reverie with Hurt. Ah, oh, this made me fall in love with Dion Reverie and it holds a special place in my heart for that. But the vocals, the verses, Whit Lowry comes through with some of his most sharp bars, especially on that last verse. And I especially love the breakdown of instrumentation at the end when it gets really emotional when Dion Reverie is singing. And Whit Lowry is just, I think he's very underrated in terms of rapping. If you like the NF or Ludicious style, check him out. Number 14 is Apparat with Voidoo, Voodoo, whatever you want to call it. Sad I wasn't able to put this higher. That Apparat record, it has grown on me. I gave it an 8 originally. I'd probably give it a 9 now in retrospect. One of my favorite albums of the year. It's so trancy. It's so hypnagogic. It is so thick in terms of atmosphere. Holy crap, I love this track. I want to go listen to this track. Number 13 is Bad Omens with If I'm There. This hit me at a time that I needed it to. This is one of the first tracks that I can genuinely say when this came out. Uh, it hit me really really hard it hit me like a truck and I'm so happy it did because I needed that at the time I really did I suggest listening to this track I'm sure you can find some relatability in the lyricism and overall I just think it is such a great way to end off the album and I think it's a genuinely great track barring my own experience with it because at the end of the day and I think some people forget about this and need a rude awakening this is all my opinion it's subjectivity I'm not objective 
And number 12, gotta give it to Arrow with Eye of God. Hope this is on their next record. It best be on their next record. Overall, besides the fact it's just Era and Era has just constantly killed it, I like that JT Cavey's experimenting with his vocals, sounding a little bit like Garrison Lee. And this has such a great chorus, but Era always does. Number 11, Fever 333 with Inglewood. So many tracks here inspired by Linkin Park. Besides the fact that Fever 333 kind of drowns in their influence a bit, I do really like this track. It is so epic. It's so long. And I love the instrumentation and the vocals are great. Hmm. We're in the top 10. These are the best. The best of the best. My favorites. Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this voice? Why am I... These... These Tommy Boy... These are the best, the 10 best, you ain't never heard songs like this before. And because I'm bipolar and can't decide what I want to do, 10 is a tie between Emotionless and White Tracks, Another Life, and Holding On To Smoke, which are back to back, and I love them literally split down the middle equally for just different reasons. Chris's vocals on these tracks are great, and I think the lyrics are at a poetic fever pitch. <laughs> You ever just see something and immediately get giddy? Number nine is the Dorian Electra track, Flamboyant. The gender politics in this track I dig a lot. I like the ability of his gender expression and I just really, really respect the dude. I'm using that gender neutral, don't get on my ass, please. They are wonderful. They have a great voice to them. I love their instrumentation. It's so lavish. It recalls old school instrumentation and their whole aesthetic, their whole music video, their whole look, their whole kind of androgynous voice, their androgynous dress style. I get behind everything about this track and then some, and I just, I remember when this first came out, I was like, oh, and I, oop! Nah, that's, that's an understatement. I went ape shit when this released because it was like, wow, this is it. <laughs> this really is it. Just a great track and very, very catchy as well, barring all of the other stuff. It's just a really catchy track. Number eight is Nothing Nowhere with Torture. Y'all knew Nothing Nowhere was going to have to pop up somewhere on this list, didn't you? You probably thought it was going to be Destruction, or you probably thought it was going to be True Love, or you probably thought it was going to be Ornament, or you probably thought it was going to be Callback, or you probably thought whatever it was. <laughs> it's Torture. It has one of the catchiest courses of Bloodlust and one of my favorite tunes of the whole year, although tracks like Ornament, tracks that call back are very very good in their own right i give it to torture number seven they bring me the horizon track why you gotta kick me when i'm down i'm probably surprising a lot of you with the picks i make of these albums but once again it's all subjectivity and it was a toss-up between this track mother tongue medicine maybe a little bit of wonderful life and especially heavy metal and mantra was also a good pick and ouch was a good pick and fresh bruises was a good pick and i apologize if you feel something was probably somewhat of a good pick i wasn't a huge fan of into the dark in the dark but that also could have kind of passed nihilus blues that is a decent track because it features grimes holy shit i'm just listing the entire album it's why you gotta kick me when i'm down love the trap and edm influences ollie sounds great on this track per usual i love that really scream delivery he does near the latter half reminds me a lot of some of my favorite moments off of their album that's the spirit number six dion reverie with hesitation i hinted that i really enjoyed his album and it's true i hinted that i really love this track in particular and i did I love his indie alternative post-rock feel. I highly suggest checking him out. This is one of the first ones I have trouble describing because it's such a cluster. It's such a fun track. It's such an emotionally poignant track. And the whole album really is weird. I highly suggest checking it out. And I check this track out in the description. Oh my god. Oh my god. We're in the top five. Oh, we're in the top five. Uh -huh. We're in the top five. Oh, lord. <laughs> Number five is NF with My Stress. Uh, do you think I was going to pick Leave Me Alone? You think I was going to pick The Search or Time, something along those lines? Maybe Nate or Returns? I really love My Stress. It has such a relatable whole, the whole song is really NF exposing himself more than ever. And I stand by the fact. This track features him sounding more vulnerable than he really ever has. And I mean that. He sounds great on this track, but he lets his vocals crack. He lets himself get a little bit more emotional than even he has in the past. And it is my personal favorite track on The Search, even though there are so many to choose from. It's not even funny. <laughs> We're in the top four. 
no, I'm not gonna do that again. Screw that. <laughs> Number four is the Cattle Decapitation track Death Atlas off the album of the same name, Death Atlas. What an epic track, what a cataclysmic track of magnitude and heaviness and brutality. Travis Ryan is a madman, the lyricism really should invoke more emotion in people than it probably does. Great track, great album. Best Death Grind album of the year. Probably one of the best death metal albums of the year. Number three, Swallow the Sun, The Crimson Crown. The crimson crown fell from the blood red sky through the golden cloud. <laughs> Love the pianos on this track. The whole album sounds great. I don't want to praise too much about this because I don't want to spoil too much about my end year list. Number two, Sayor, Forgotten Paths. Best folk metal black black and folk metal track of the year considering this is a solo project i remember when i first heard this it just blew my mind it really blew my mind it sounds so good the production work is so good the influences is so good i love the flute i love how this track stops and you think it's over and then it's just like nope we're back and we're gonna back to bust your head in no album this year in the black metal genre which black metal is habitually a genre that has a habit of you know trying to bring other genres into the fold this album does it the best of any i've heard the melodicism the heaviness oh honk, honk. and then finally my favorite track of the year one that no one but one person a close friend of mine you know who you are uh if you're watching this just like <laughs> Actually, I'm not gonna- I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Uh, <laughs> God, I'm such a dork. Anyway, number one is the Anamanaguchi track, Lorem Ipsum. What can I say about this track? It's so emotional for me for some reason. It invokes such power in my heart, and it makes me feel uplifted, sorrowful at the same time. The scents are amazing. The composition of this track is unparalleled this year. It's so good. It really is so good. Listen to Laura Mipsoon, please. Anyways, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what your favorite songs of the year are. I'm gonna post these all alphabetically, like I said, in the description box below, so you can go check them out and give me your thoughts. Let me know if I recommended anything that you end up enjoying. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to join the review family today. Smash that notification bell to be notified of my future uploads. My voice hurts, and I'm signing off saying farewell.